One of the biggest hurdles for a lot of people when it comes to learning about this type of wiring is that you can look at a schematic like this one here, but it doesn't always answer your questions. For example, what is the G terminal and Y terminal on this transformer and the boiler actually do? Now you can download a bunch of manuals, not find an answer. You could search the internet, not find an answer. I'm going to give you guys some straight answers, and this is going to give you the answers you need for a clear vision on how do we approach diagnosing a problem in this system. We're going to go right into the heart of it and we're going to start with the transformer right now. So here we have our transformer. On the back side we have our black and white wires where we hook up our 120 volts. The R terminal is where the power originates on our low voltage control system. So all of these other terminals, none of them are powered directly from the transformer itself. It's just the R terminal that's powered. Now, when you do have power at any of these other terminals, it's coming from here. It's just going through the circuit and coming back. So everything starts right here. Now, when you look at the schematic, you're gonna see two wires coming off of that R terminal, and that's what I have right here. These two wires are powering your low water cutoff and the motor in your vent damper. So if you were to trace these wires out on an actual boiler, you would find one wire would go up to a Molex plug, which is for your vent damper. And if you were to trace the other wire, I have it all bundled up here, it would go into a Molex plug right here that goes into your low water cutoff. The 24 volts provided by your R terminal on the, on the transformer, when it gets to the low water cutoff, this is the voltage that's going to go through all the safeties in your circuit until it eventually gets to the gas valve. So that's going to be the spill switch, your pressure troll, um, your vent damper, and everything else. Now, if you were to look right on the board here next to this Molex plug, you're going to see 1, 2, and P2 written there. You're also going to see corresponding terminals. You're going to see 1, 2, and P2. P2 right here. Now, some of these systems may not have a Molex plug like this. It might just be three black wires going straight to the terminals, but it basically works the same way. Um, you're going to have your power coming in. That's going to be on number one terminal here. All right, so the factory jumper that's installed here is to provide power for the P1 um, terminal, which is for your low water cutoff, and that voltage has to make it through the low water condition in order to pass on to the P2 terminal right here. And that P2 terminal will come back out the black wire and it goes to the G terminal on the transformer. Now these other terminals here, um, this one and two terminal, that's your hot and your neutral. Um, so that one of those wires will be your neutral coming back and that actually goes to the C terminal on your transformer or the common. Now in a low water condition, you're going to have power on P1, but you're not going to have power on P2 because the low water condition interrupts that circuit. But you will have power on the A terminal here. Um, and what this is, is this is a source of power, 24 volt source of power for an automatic water feeder. So these wires you see hooked up here, these actually go up to an automatic water feeder. We're taking power off of that one terminal. We're taking a neutral off of that two terminal. And our, we have that green wire here going up to an A or W, or sometimes it's labeled a feed terminal on the automatic water feeder. So in a low water condition, the A terminal and your common, you'll have your 24 volts uh, between P2 and common. You won't have power there. So once the water condition is met, there's a 30 second delay so that we can get the water level up above the actual probe that's in the boiler. And then that power will cut off on the A terminal and it'll be restored on P2. And from P2, it goes back to the G terminal on our transformer. So this wire coming back from P2 to this plug is gonna go on your G terminal, okay? And that power is now gonna go up to your thermostat. So off of that G terminal, your 24 volts travels up to the R terminal on your thermostat. When the thermostat calls for heat, it passes that power over to the W terminal on your thermostat and it comes back down the other black wire. Now you'll see here, that black wire will lead to another plug and this goes on to your Y terminal. Okay, so it's not for cooling, it's for the 24 volts calling for heat. 
So when it hits that Y terminal, it'll then travel on to the rest of the circuit until it eventually makes it to the gas valve. Now, if you paid a little bit of attention, you're gonna notice that your low water cutoff is in between the R terminal on your transformer and the R terminal on your thermostat. Now, what that means is that if your boiler has a low water condition, your thermostat's not getting 24 volts. Now, this is a problem for people who try to install Nest thermostats on steam boilers. They think you just go to the common and everything will be good, but it's not. Um, this low water cutoff interruption is gonna cause problems with those kinds of thermostats and you're still gonna have power problems. So going back to our Y terminal, we have our black wire coming in from the W terminal on our thermostat right here. And you'll have another black wire coming off of that. And when you trace that out, you will come to your spill switch on your flue. Now what this is, this is basically just a temperature limit if your flue for example let's say it was clogged up there was something blocking the chimney um, your vent your flue pipe will actually start to heat up and trip this sensor off so that we don't continue firing up the boiler and filling the house with noxious gases um, so this kind of prevents that that's a safety so once that temperature is below this set point on here it will continue on with the other black wire coming off of it and when we trace that out it brings us to our pressure troll. So we have two settings on this pressure troll. We have a cut-in setting and we have a pressure differential setting. Now the cut-in pressure setting is the setting or the pounds in PSI that the boiler will fire up once it meets that setting. So for example, if we have a pressure setting of one pound, when the steam pressure on the system reaches one pound, your boiler will fire up. Now your pressure differential setting, you'll see numbers on this dial here. It goes one, two, three, and so on. Now what this is, is this is your cutout pressure, uh, but it's not exactly what the number is. It's this plus your cut-in pressure. So if this is set to one, your cut-in pressure is set to one. Well, um, you add those two together and your cutoff pressure is going to be two pounds. If you have a half a pound on this and your differential is set to one, your cutout pressure will be one and a half pounds. Now I can make an entire video on how these pressures are supposed to be set. It depends on the piping in your system. It depends on how many fittings. It depends on how long the runs are, whether it's a counterflow system or a two pipe system and so on. But generally you don't really need more than two PSI in residential applications. If it's set much higher than that, um, either somebody's been screwing it with it who shouldn't have, or they're trying to overcome a problem uh, with a temporary fix and the excessive pressure is just gonna end up causing more problems down the road. So when the boiler pressure reaches that cut in limit, it's going to complete the connection between that wire that's coming from our spill switch and the wire that leaves the pressure troll. And when we trace that black wire from our pressure troll, it's going to come to two yellow wires, which will go to our flame rollout. Now this is down by the burner front, and uh, this is another safety. If the flame starts to roll back out of the boiler when it shouldn't, this will cut that circuit off and the boiler will not be able to fire. From this here, it goes to your damper. And this brings us back to our Molex plug and it comes back out the blue wire here, which is the connection that goes to your gas valve. Now we don't have a control module or a spark ignition on this arrangement we have here. What we have is a standing pilot boiler. What that means is that there's always a pilot light lit underneath the boiler and if it ever goes out, you have to manually relight it. Now there's one more hurdle for the gas valve before the system will actually fire up and that is your thermocouple down by the pilot flame. Your pilot flame, it sits in this thermocouple and it generates a DC voltage and that goes back to your gas valve and that voltage actually holds the valve open so that it knows there's a flame there because if we don't have that, um, if we just had the gas valve open on that 24 volt signal from the vent damper, we would just be dumping gas into the house without lighting it up if there's no pilot there. So naturally we need something to prevent that from happening and the thermocouple is that thing. Okay, so what we got here, we got our gas valve here. We see our thermocouple right here. Now this sits in the pilot flame. This here is your pilot gas going back to the valve 
And this is your thermocouple wire that goes back to the other side of the gas valve. And this provides the millivolts needed for the gas valve to actually operate. So what you would do if you needed to test this, um, you would actually have to disconnect this here, your thermocouple. All right, you would put your alligator clips on here, set your multimeter to um, DC voltage. Uh, you connect your other probe to a ground source and you would actually have to put this on pilot, hold the pilot button down and light the flame. And you have to keep the flame lit until you start getting a reading on this in millivolts. Now you're looking for at least 25 or 30 millivolts for a valve to actually operate. Um, if you have a good thermocouple, it'll probably be higher than that. But if you're not getting that, then either the thermocouple needs to be cleaned, um, which is something you can actually try first, or it needs to be replaced. Um, if you have the millivolts here that you need, and you have the 24 volts coming in on that wire from your vent damper, then your problem is somewhere inside the solenoid and it needs to be repaired or replaced.